Right-wing Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema is known for ducking interviews with the press, but surprisingly, she actually chose to sit down for an interview with a local ABC News affiliate out of Arizona. But you're going to see why she chose this particular outlet with this particular reporter. Because rather than choosing to do, well, journalism, if I'm allowed to use that as a verb, this reporter chose to give her the most softest softball interview perhaps that i've ever seen and i don't mean to be hyperbolic but this really was bad so i just want to play a really quick clip that kind of encapsulates how bad this interview was first off thanks for coming and uh and doing this with me uh how does it feel to have your name on historic legislation i just kind of want to get that out of the way you and i have known each other for almost as long as you been in politics. It's when been you, a couple when, decades. Yeah, well, okay. You look a lot better than I do, I'll tell you that. Um, I mean, I know that that was quick, but that basically perfectly embodies the essence of this interview. This reporter was 100% in the camp of Kirsten Cinema, and it was evident throughout the course of the interview, not just because of the questions that he asked, but the way that he framed these questions. Now, before we actually get to the interviewer himself, I want to play a really quick clip because I saw something about this that kind of raised some red flags. So there's there's no way to prove this. It's mere speculation. It's conjecture, rather. But it seems as if Kirsten Sotoma had ample time to actually prepare questions or prepare answers to these questions rather in advance. Like, it seems like she knew exactly what was going to be asked given the scripted responses or seemingly scripted responses that she gave. Again, I can't prove anything, but watch for yourself and see how fake and inorganic this conversation felt. Six billion bucks is a lot of money for Arizona. It sure is. Are you the one that's going to watch over how this gets spent here? How does this work? Well, I don't think Arizonans will be surprised to learn that immediately following the signing ceremony on Monday, which I was delighted to attend and speak at, I immediately found Mitch Landrieu, former mayor, who's been designated as the national coordinator for this effort. I stopped him on the lawn and said, look, Mitch, congratulations, today's a big day. I need to meet with you right away because I want to ensure that these dollars that we worked so hard to designate for Arizona are absolutely used efficiently and effectively and quickly. Okay, and what did he tell you? He said yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, he didn't really have much of a choice otherwise, did he? <laughs> <laughs> no, he sure didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's subtle. But if you're not paying attention to these little things, then you're going to miss it. So think about how biased the framing of his question was. He asks, are you the one who's going to watch over how this gets spent here? So that presupposes two things. One, that she's trustworthy and we should want her to watch over the way that this bill is implemented. And two, that she's actually looking out for the best interests of people in Arizona when she's proven with her actions that that is indeed not the case. So it's just the way that this interviewer bungles this and gives what appears to be his friend or his crush, maybe a softball interview is embarrassing. Like this is quintessential shit journalism. This is propaganda. Uh, now, I want to move on to her opportunity to respond uh, as given to her by the reporter where, you know, he asks her to respond to progressives. And, you know, predictably, she is going to have very vacuous bullshit answers, but just pay attention specifically to how scripted everything sounds. Like every single sentence that she says, it seems like it was focus group tested. Here in Arizona, Democrats, progressives uh, in particular, um, didn't like your methods. Can you explain your, and I think part of that was you didn't talk a whole lot. Yeah. You just worked. Now that it's done, and you can breathe a little. Can you explain how you went about the process of moving this bill forward sure. and getting it across the line? You know, when I first was elected um, to head to Washington, D.C. and represent Arizona about nine years ago, I promised to be a workhorse, not a show horse. And that's exactly what I've done over these last nine years. Now, in the three years I've served in the United States Senate, I've been known for just putting my head down and doing the work. And my experience is, if you want to negotiate and get to an agreement on difficult topics, the best way to do that is to build trust. And when you're building trust with someone, you work one-on-one. -on -one. 
you solve the problem, you stay focused, and you don't get distracted by the noise outside. Now I know that a lot of folks wanted to hear that noise outside, but they probably didn't have the same goal as me, which is to negotiate and pass a historic infrastructure bill into law. And I guess I would just say the proof is in the pudding. Here we are today, the bill has become law, and we move on to the next topic, which is to implement it for the benefit of everyday Arizonans. So while there are some who may not like this approach, it works. And I think it represents what Arizonans elected me to do, which is to put my head down, get the work done, and deliver results for everyday families. Now listen, at first when I was watching this, I thought everything she's saying is horseshit. But then she did the thumb point. And whenever I see a politician doing the thumb point, and specifically like centering the thumb with their body and pushing it forward, that tells me they're telling the truth. That tells me they're definitely not disingenuous. Folks, watching this interview made me want to bang my fucking head against the desk. It's insufferable. And I, I'm going to use the word insufferable repeatedly, and it's going to sound redundant, but I don't think there's another word that more aptly represents this aside from propaganda. I mean, listening to how fake everything was, it's just, it was torture. <laughs> it, was, it was borderline torture. Now, again, in his question, so notice how he compliments her. He sets up the softball, tees it up for an easy, you know, response. He says, you didn't talk a whole lot. You just worked. Now, this implies that the reason why Kirsten Sinema refused to speak with members of the press throughout the negotiation process is because she was just so busy. She had her head down, she was crunching numbers, and we've seen weird pieces about her work ethic from Axios as well, but this is just factually incorrect. She spent time with donors. They held multiple private fundraisers for her throughout the process. So if she had time for that, of course she had time to do a five-minute interview with the press. But yet, she has this amazing work ethic. Okay? And her response here is the best. She says, well, when I went to D.C., I promised to be a workhorse and not a show horse. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what I've done over these last nine years. Okay. I don't even know how to respond to that. I just want to off myself in Roblox. Honestly, I don't know what it is about, about when she said that. Um, she might as well have just said, look, I am in favor of good things and against bad things. Like that's the level of shit platitudes were at. That was just bad. And notice how the implication is that progressives were bad, not necessarily because they disagreed with her or didn't like her corruption, but because they misunderstood her methods. Now, I don't really give a shit about her methods per se. You can be a bad negotiator, but still be in favor of good policies and vice versa. What we took issue with was her corruption. But this interviewer didn't actually seem to have a problem with these conflicts of interest. And later on, he asks a question where he implies that the reason why progressives don't like her is because we're immature. Now, this isn't what he says, but that's the implication here. You know, Kirsten Sinema, she used to be progressive and naive before too. And she grew up, she evolved. And I think they actually use the word evolved, uh, but we'll see here in a second here. And once we evolve, then we'll see it the way that she sees it too. Now, if by evolve, you mean just like change your political beliefs because you accept large financial contributions from, from special interests. I mean, perhaps that would be the case, but look at how the blame is shifted to progressives and not Kirsten Sinema herself. As you look at the progressives here in the state uh, today, especially the young people, that was you one time, and you've evolved. How do you see them today? And, and I guess, what do you say to those folks who may be conflicted about how you go about your business? Well, first, I want to say that I appreciate the First Amendment. It's critical to all of us as Americans. And in Arizona, we are heavily supportive of the First Amendment. So I appreciate when folks are willing to tell me they agree with me or disagree with me, if they want to protest, if they want to offer thanks, all of that is welcome. That's how I hear feedback from folks in Arizona, and I'm grateful for that feedback. I'll also say that I'll get up every single day and do what I've always done, which is just put Arizona first, keep my head down, not get distracted by the noise, and just deliver the results. So I guess my message to folks would be, keep telling me what you think. I appreciate it. 
I think you should go fuck yourself with a cactus, Senator. Hope you appreciate that. Now, when she responded by first bringing up the First Amendment, at that point, I almost couldn't take any more of this interview. To respond to your critics by saying, well, first of all, let me just say how much I support the First Amendment. You're going to say some insufferable, vague bullshit that is completely pointless. You're not going to substantively address their points in any meaningful way. You're just going to say, well, we can disagree, but, you know, at the end of the day, we all come together. Some bullshit. It doesn't matter. I mean, this is the result of a reporter allowing the interviewee to get away with anything, to kind of, like, run circles. I mean, around them. At this point, she could have just done her own interview because that's basically what we were seeing it was all framed for her, possibly by her, and there's no point in having the interview there. She should have just posted a fucking YouTube video. I mean, it, it's just, it, it's insane. I mean, just interview yourself at that point. Well, uh, Senator Cinema, what's it like being so awesome? <laughs> well, let me tell you, it's not easy, actually. You know, every day I wake up and I just think, man, I wish that more people can see the world the way that I see it. Wow, that's so inspirational. Tell me more. <laughs> I'd love to. Well, you know, I get up in the morning, uh, I hold a wine glass up to my asshole, fart in it, and then huff that. <laughs> and then I just think, man, life is good. Wow, that's incredible. Can I possibly huff the fart out of your asshole, Senator? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, this is going off the rails. I'm going to stop. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's right. Maybe we are immature. But look, Let's recap. Let's recap here, right? This journalist, this journalist, I'm being very charitable here, had an opportunity to ask her a question. Just one real fucking question. Any question. He could have asked her about the legalized bribes that she's taken from special interests and how that conflict of interest influences her decisions as a lawmaker. He could have asked her about how her constituents have no access to her and if you actually want to schedule a meeting with her, you have to be a wealthy donor who holds a fundraiser for her. He could have asked her about her refusal to support life-saving policies that are overwhelmingly popular or her refusal to support the abolition of the filibuster, which is needed in order to accomplish voting rights reform. I mean, there's so much that he could have asked, but this was a missed opportunity. Uh, the one thing, however, that does give me hope is the response to this. Now, not many people watched this interview. I'm sure it aired on the local news outlet, but on their YouTube channel, on ABC News' YouTube channel, the people who watched this saw right through it. And I'm happy to report that I was the 69th dislike on that video. Nice. And the comments also gave me hope because they too saw right through the bullshit, which is really encouraging. So this person says she knew every question beforehand. And I also consider this as well. This person says, how does this one Karen have more power than all the Democrats combined? A few more acting classes, and this won't look so much like an infomercial slash campaign ad and more like the natural interview you were going for. Who is this guy? Is he an actual reporter? It feels so staged. Reporter, do your job. Ask her hard questions. Hard-hitting interview, ABC 15. You are a joke. So that's one thing that I have to say about this. Politicians, they've trotted out the same slimy and sleazy tactics for decades now, and finally people are seeing through it, and they're repulsed by it. And that's really good to see. I no longer have to come out here and explain to you why this interview was fake, why it appears to be scripted, because people already see through that on their own. And that is really, really encouraging. For all the issues that we have in this country, the one thing that gives me optimism is the fact that more and more people are waking up to how much these politicians just like to bullshit with these platitudes and cliches, but it's not going to work any longer. Kirsten Sinema knows that if she wants to remain a senator, she has to rehabilitate her career. So she thought that this interview perhaps would be her way to regain support that she's lost over the course of the last couple of months. But people aren't buying it. People aren't as naive as, as they used to be, or at least the Democratic Party's base in Arizona doesn't seem as naive as they used to be. And at least that is something that we can hang on to. But going back to the interview, I mean, Jesus Christ, what a fucking catastrophe that was do yourself a favor and click the join button on youtube to become a member because mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous many people are saying this 
Join today, folks. You won't regret it.